developer and today I'm going to be showing you <coughs> a preview of the new Xcode that just came out, Xcode 4. So this is the default screen for Xcode 4. Uh, it might not look a lot different from Xcode 3, but it, now there's a new button that says connect to a repository. So I'm just going to be showing you one of my project, projects through Xcode 4, along with a preview. So let's just... Let's just open up one of my projects. And I'm just going to resize it so that it fills the screen. is quite a bit different. Um, <clears throat> whereas we had Xcode and Interface Builder in Xcode 3, uh, now all the both Xcode and Interface Builder have been compiled into one application. So for example, if I were to open this XIBO file over here, it will show the contents over here, along with the library and then the inspector and all that. Uh, there is, this is the initial release Xcode version 4.0. So uh, as far as I can tell, there is some lag in loading the different pages as compared to the <coughs> previous Xcode, which I was running Xcode 3.2, I believe. Uh, the pages do take a while longer to load. As you can see, it takes maybe a second or two for the page to load, whereas uh, the load was instantaneous in Xcode 3.2. Uh, but hopefully the speed issues will be fixed in an update. It, it is, however, very nice to have the XIB file be able to be edited within Xcode instead of loading Interface Builder. Um, <clears throat> there is also quite a bit difference when submitting application to the App Store. Um, in X, before Xcode 4, the process was to actually use an application called Application Loader, and through there, you would have to compre compress your uh, your binary and actually send it using Application Loader. Now, all you have to do is go under Product on the Xcode header. As you, uh, you can't see it right now, but there's a button called Product. Click it, and then click the Archive button. And then once you archive it, if you go into organizer and organizer is also a lot a, bit, a lot different so I'll also be a clean organizer so once you organize it uh, once you archive it my bad sorry uh, once you archive it it'll actually show up in your archives and with all your creation needs and everything and all you have to do is click submit validate or share so if you are going to submit it to <coughs> Apple you'd click submit and that basically loads up application loader right here where you would enter all your credentials and then submit the application. So as you can see right here, this the status is submitted. So that's a bit different. Uh, organizer has also gotten a lot of changes. As you can see, the tabs are a lot different. Uh, <clears throat> you now have a documentation tab where you can actually view all your doc documentation from organizer instead of actually opening a separate new window for uh, documentation as it was in Xcode 3.2. Um, the Projects tab shows all the projects that you have open and which ones are running, repositories, and devices. The devices tab is also very different. Here are your devices. You can view all your provisioning profiles, applications, console, device logs, screenshots. <clears throat> you also have your profiles and device logs and software images and stuff like that. So, Organizer has received quite a bit of upgrade. Um, additionally, uh, building for distribution has also become a lot different. Uh, as you can see, whereas there is a run, there is a build and run button here. Now there's a run button, and if you click your mouse and hold under the run button like so, you can actually you see there's several options. There's run, test, profile, and analyze. Uh, for example, Analyze will be using instruments to test how, uh, the, the performance of your application. Um, now there's also this new thing called Scheme, 
which once you drop down, you can choose, as you can see, we've gained a, a couple of new simulators. We have the iPad 4.3 and iPhone 4.3 simulators now. But what I really want to talk about is the schemes. Uh, <clears throat> a few have found the schemes to be a bit complicated when first loading, loading up Xcode 4, because in Xcode 3, you actually have to build for distribution and then um, set your build to be under the distribution file that you created. And then it would build for distribution. You have to compress that, compress the binary that's in the distribution folder of your application, and then send that to Apple. But now the scheme with schemes is quite different. What you do, you open up schemes, edit scheme. And as you can see, here are all the possible things that you can do. You can build, run, test, profile, analyze, and archive. So here is where you choose the build configuration. So as you see, you have debug, release, and distribution. Debug being when you're testing an application, release when you're releasing it, and distributing when you're actually trying to send it to Apple. Uh, you can choose your executable, which will almost always be the current application you're running, and the but debugger. <clears throat> and there's a lot more options for this. To your destination, build, run, test, debug, profile, analyze, and archive. Uh, you can also manage schemes, so you can have several different schemes. As you can see, there's only one by default, but you can duplicate it by clicking into it and then clicking duplicate scheme. Uh, you can add a new scheme, a completely new scheme, and there's a lot of options. So schemes are something that's really new to Xcode. They've never had it before. and if I go to, if I look at the left sidebar, you can see it has quite a few new buttons. For example, here you can now search for files that are in your um, that are in your SD in your uh, application. I don't think this feature was supported in Xcode 3.2, but I may be wrong. Uh, you can also <clears throat> use this button right here to add new files instead of clicking file, new, or right-clicking here and clicking add files or whatever. You can now just click the plus button, one button away. Um, the organization is still the same as you've seen from previous Xcode versions. Uh, there's a lot of different views now. This is the folder view, this is the project navigator as they call it. You may still see all your files. But then they also added a couple of new options. For example, they said this, here's the symbol navigator, as they call it. And you can view it as hierarchical or flat. I haven't, I haven't done much experimentation with this, so I'm still most familiar with the, whatever they call it, the project navigator. And here you can actually search for your files as was below. So search in project, you can actually search in project. In project and frameworks, and it's pretty nice. Uh, here are the issues that are with your application, the debugs, the breakpoints, and what do they call this? They call this uh, they call this the long navigator. So this is a bit different. Uh, <clears throat> this is also a bit different over here. Over here you have the library, and then the code snippets, and then the objects, and then the media library. So this is also a bit different. Um, you can see the different, if, in the XIB files, it's also very different. As you see, here is the inspector. Uh, there's actually a lot of new views now for the inspector, quick help, uh, file inspector, all this stuff. They've added a couple of new views. This is the they call this the connections, yeah. And you can also view your editor in different ways. You can add tabs now, so you can view multiple files at once through tabs. Uh, here you can set if you want the left sidebar, the bottom side, the bottom bar, or the right sidebar, or all of them. So I think this is actually a great improvement. Um, of course, there's still a lot of new features that I haven't looked at yet. So I may post another video, a continuation of this video, um, showing those. And yeah, I think this has really gotten a lot better since Xcode 3.2.
So the only thing I would suggest is really clear up all the lag. There have been some reports of actually Xcode not even working, just crashing, and you can't even open up anything. So fix those problems, uh, clean it up a bit, make it a bit faster, as right now there's a couple of seconds of lag. And yeah, that's it. Uh, additionally, I would like to show you one more thing. Um, Xcode 4 now has live, um, I guess you could call it debugging. For example, if you type in some random code, as you can see, it'll automatically give you this exclamation mark showing that there's an error. Instead of, uh, <clears throat> in previous versions of Xcode, you actually had to go in and build to see these errors. Now they'll show up in real time. So basically, if I if I basically if I type in something that's incorrect or that's not a function in Xcode or that has an error, it'll sh it'll show me where the errors are, and it'll it should display it in here over here where it says no issues. It should display it, but I don't know why it's not doing that right now. And once I clear this, as you can see, the errors go away. So that's another really neat feature for Xcode four. Um, the ability to see your errors that you're making and all the errors that you have in real time. So you don't have to build to do that, to see those, it saves you a bit of time. And so I guess that's it. Uh, this is my initial impression of Xcode. So if you like my videos, please subscribe, rate this. Uh, if you have any questions about how to do something in Xcode and you just can't figure it out by yourself, leave a comment and I'll be glad to help you out. Um, yeah, so yeah, again, check out my other videos, subscribe, and you guys have a good day.